we have uh, our next speaker, guest speaker. He will be talking about blockchain for youth empowerment. Now, if you have missed anything so far, I'm sure you don't want to miss this session. If you look at how Ray is dressed, you know he's um, a full-blooded Nigerian. And I'm expecting a lot of you to welcome him with a very loud Nigerian ovation. Ladies and gentlemen, well, make welcome the CEO or founder of Paxful in Nigeria. Put your hands together for Ray Youssef. The youth in the house, I'm sure you can do a lot better than that. He's dressed in green, white, green. Full-blooded Nigerian. Come on, give him a round of applause. <laughs> Don't you like that? Ray Youssef, founder and CEO, Paxful. Ray is a founder and the CEO of Paxful. It's a global peer-to-peer -peer platform with over 10 million users. The company was recently named a Time 100 Most Influential Company for 2022. A proud African immigrant, Ray grew up in the middle of Hell's Kitchen during the 80s and 90s while working at his parents' newsstand. Prior to launching Paxful, he started out as an entrepreneur, founding a series of startups, including a successful digital ringtone business. He realized that the fundamentals of our financial system were broken, but that Bitcoin offered a way for anyone, anywhere to access the global market. Paxful was born from that idea. In 2021, Ray was named one of Coindex's 40 most influential people. He's also a contributor for Bitcoin magazine. As part of Paxful's mission to support emerging markets, Ray founded the Built with Bitcoin Foundation, a 501c3 not-for-profit dedicated to creating equitable opportunity by providing clean water, access to quality education, sustainable farming, and humanitarian support, all powered by Bitcoin. To date, the foundation has built and repaired 10 schools, 7 solar projects, and over a dozen water and farming systems across the globe. With the Rouse Innovation, let's make welcome Ray Youssef. Wow, look at this place. The house is packed today. Oh my goodness. Big round of applause for Joffrey and Mohammed Yeager who put together this amazing event and invited me here. Thank you so much, brothers. You guys have rocked it. And I see you found some real superstars as well to join us, but I got to give my love first to the people and especially the youth of Nigeria. You are the true superstars. You have taught me everything I know about this business. I'm not one of those Harvard guys. My father wasn't rich. They were school teachers. And everything I learned about business, I learned by doing business. On the streets from my mother, and most importantly from the people that use whatever I build. They're the ones that I've learned everything from. It was the youth of Nigeria that showed me what Bitcoin and blockchain is truly good for. Well, the white boys were all playing with Bitcoin and funny money, playing games, pumping and dumping. It is the youth of Nigeria that have found a way to use Bitcoin and blockchain to change their lives. And most importantly, make money. Yes, that's what this is all about. I'm putting it down right now. We are here so we understand how we're going to make it rain. The youth of Nigeria have found a way around every single problem they have had, and they have used Bitcoin and blockchain to do that. I want everyone to know that, and no one can take that away from you guys. Blockchain for youth empowerment, the youth figured it out first. We're just following along. The question is, how much attention do we want to pay? So, first, what is the most important thing? What are the three most important things in life? Number one is your health. We all got that here, thank God, alhamdulillah. Respect and love of your peers and family, we all got that too, great. What's number three, folks? Money, money is number three. 
And that's what this is about. We're here to solve problems. We're here to fix this mess that people who came before us put us in. The youth of Africa, and especially of Nigeria, we're not here to blame anyone. We're just looking to move forwards and upwards, right? So let's talk about how we can do that. So first, a little bit about me. I'm just going to tell you guys, no, I am an immigrant from Egypt. My parents came to America, but there was no opportunity in Egypt. Money, Egypt is a prison for money and people, kind of like how Nigeria is. So they left to a foreign country, foreign language. It was very hard for them. It was very hard for my mother and father. We were growing up in New York City in Hell's Kitchen and during the crack epidemic. And I was right there on the streets working with my family. So I saw a lot. But thank God I learned a lot. And throughout that journey, I was always wondering, why does it have to be like this? Right? When I got old enough, why did my parents have to leave their country and go to a new place? Why couldn't they have made money back home? 80% of the population of the world is in the global south. Africa, India, Southeast Asia, Latin America, yet only less than 20% of the wealth. Why is that? Are us black, brown, and yellow people just lazy? What's going on? What's the real reason? I went to the Egyptian Revolution, and I was there in Tahrir Square, got bloodied up, learned a lesson, came back to America, and I got right in the middle of Occupy Wall Street. And it was a bunch of young kids asking the same question that I was asking. But it was Bitcoin and blockchain that showed me what money is really about. It answered one very simple question for me. What is money? What is it? We hear about money, right? Let's face it, this is all about money, and there's nothing wrong with that. Money is the free circulatory system of humanity. It is human work encapsulated to transcend time and space, and that's a beautiful invention. Thank God for money. It's awesome. I can do my work here, and I can take my work and my value and trade it for anything anywhere in the world. Beautiful invention. Why isn't it working, though? Money is broken. Why is it broken? Who broke it? Why? And how we can fix it. I'll skip right to the chase and talk about how we are fixing it, right? So I started Paxful about seven and a half years ago. And we had some challenges, right? At the time, I was talking about, hey, I think the emerging world, that's the term I was using back then, I don't really like it, because I think we emerged a long time ago. We've been here, right? So we've got this problem, guys, and how are we going to fix it? Let's look at what the youth have done here in Nigeria. Every single problem that people have had with money, the youth have found a way to solve it, right? Payments, remittances. Let's talk about some examples of that, because examples are important, right? How many people here have tried to make a payment outside of Nigeria and had difficulty, even to the country next door? Raise your hands. All right. So we have problems sending money even to the country next door. How many people have tried to make a payment outside of the continent to the West, America, Europe, make a payment in China, and have had difficulty. Raise your hands. All right. And I'd wager there'll be a lot more hands outside of this room, because that process is nearly impossible. The biggest problem in the world is what I call economic apartheid. It is the elephant in the room, it is the thing that no one really talks about, but it is the thing, one thing more than anything else, that has kept us poor. And who is imposing this upon us? It is the dead and dying West. The West is old, sterile. They are not making babies. They are only playing with funny money, and they are punishing all of us. Now, I'm not here to make enemies, but I'm just calling it like it is. All the growth of the world is here. We should not be poor. We should be wealthy. And I'm not talking about the natural resources in the ground. I'm talking about the natural resources I'm looking at right now. The young people in this room, the people that are ready to work, that have ambition, that have drive, that have vision, and are ready to do what the other guy is not. That is what makes you rich. So how do we unlock all that potential? There's 1.4 billion people on this continent. Most of them are young and they're ready to go. What's slowing us down? We need to make that money 
flow, right? A human body is not going to be active and healthy if all the blood is trapped in your legs. It has to flow around for that body to move around and get things done. And that's all we have to do is allow the money to flow. So what are we up against? Why isn't that money flowing? I'm not going to talk about corruption. People always use that as a cop-out. Let me tell you, Nigeria, Africa is not the only place that suffers from corruption. America has more than its fair share. It just dressed up real pretty. So you from Nigeria, you guys have taught me everything I know. And I want to see you make even more money. I want to see what you've done. This experiment exported to the entire world. What happened when the government forbid their banks from doing business with cryptocurrency exchanges? What did the youth of Nigeria do? They started trading a lot more, <laughs> and our volumes went up. COVID, bans, nothing can stop you guys from making things happen. Nothing can stop you guys from making money. But we need to take it to a whole new level right now. Paxful, what I built, is an arbitrage marketplace. It's a little complicated to use, right? But if you're a real hustler and you're willing to put in time, you can make a hell of a lot of money. There's Nigerians, brothers and sisters here that have built their own little versions of PayPal and Western Union using peer-to-peer -peer trading. And they brought their friends and family into it. Nothing makes me feel better than when a brother or sister comes up to me with a car and says, hey, I bought this with Paxful trading. That's beautiful. And I want to see a lot more of that. How can we make that happen? How can we push that even faster? Well, one of the first steps is some dialogue here. We got the government and we've got the people, the youth. In America, you don't see the government and the youth talking unless it's some Walt Disney stuff. I don't know. But I believe Nigeria can lead the entire world and put the West to shame. I believe we can lead the path as the exemplars. None of this third world nonsense. We lead on every single front. We bring the people together at the table that should be there. Government, business, and the future of this country, the youth. Well, they're here, guys. They're not just the future. They're here. The closer we can bring them to the table, the closer we're going to get to innovation-friendly regulation. Because regulation is not our enemy. The government is not our enemy. These are good people trying to make things happen, and they suffer from pressures we can only imagine. And sometimes they can't even tell us about those pressures. Let's be respectful of that. And what these people go through every single day, you can't imagine... And I'll just use the word evil they have to deal with coming from other sources outside of all of our control. The more mature you get, the more you understand that. So let's keep that in the back of our heads. And let's make something amazing happen. Let's bring the youth together with the government. Let's put together some innovation, regulation-friendly innovation that puts every other country in the world to shame, that makes the West look at us and say, hey, what are they doing over there? Is that allowed? It just happened. And I believe we can do that faster than anyone else. That's how fast things can move in Nigeria with the people properly motivated, and that's why I love Nigeria. I don't know what God put into you guys, but he put a little something extra. That's for sure. There's a little extra spice there. I wish I could say that about Egypt, but you guys are way ahead of the game, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to bet on the winners. I'm here to bet on the winners, and I'm putting all my money on Nigeria. You guys are leading cryptocurrency adoption. And everyone thinks, man, with this kind of adoption, 33% of Nigerians must have crypto. That's the number I hear. That's not true. It's probably less than 2% or 1%. It's just the quality of that percentage. These are amazing human beings, and if we can get out truly the 33%, then Nigeria will be the richest country in the world. But here are some of the perks. With crypto, with blockchain, with Bitcoin, every government in the world has the power to put their workforce inside the country making hard currency. Yes. Previously, a country would have to export 
that workforce outside of the country. They become the diaspora. They send money home via remittance. And Western Union gets all that cheddar, right? And they don't share it. But now with blockchain and with a currency like Bitcoin, we can actually put the youth in this country to work. An immensely empowered, over-talented, and ambitious youth put to work bringing in Bitcoin into the continent. No one can imagine the level of talent in this country. I try to tell people that every time I go to Lagos, every other guy I bump into has a fintech startup, and they're all awesome. That is the greatest natural resource of the world. It is builders. It is not oil, cobalt, coltran, or whatever you're going to find in the ground. So we've got all the tools, guys. I'm here to bring the people together at the table to share my story and to learn from you guys. Because I believe we are sitting on the greatest possible opportunity ever. And I'm not just talking about, hey, let's help people fight inflation. Or let's make remittance cheaper. Or let's let people send money back home or wherever, make a payment easier. It's a lot bigger than that. It's a lot bigger than that and it's about time. I'm talking about a play for a golden age. Started by the global south and benefiting the entirety of humanity. The internet, we had a great video about that. We've come a long way, us internet geeks, right? And now we have mobile phone penetration. Everyone in this room has a mobile phone. Everyone, everyone knows in this room has a mobile phone. Everyone they know probably has a mobile phone. It probably goes down eight levels. That's unprecedented. And guess what? We have that final component. We have peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. Those were the first words of the tech, the currency that started this whole blockchain thing, right? The Bitcoin white paper, the internet, mobile phones, and Bitcoin slash blockchain are all peer-to-peer -peer technologies. Humans helping humans. People powered. No invisible voices getting into the conversation. Everyone is accounted for. This is the last thing that we need. And I'm here to build it. What's going to happen here is going to be a lot bigger than any one company. It's going to be a lot bigger than Paxful. It's going to be a lot bigger than me. But make no mistake, Nigeria is ground zero, and it is the youth of Nigeria that will lead this movement. There is no one that can take that away from you, and I promise you, you will be in the history books 10, 20 years from now when people are wondering how did this thing kick off in the midst of an ongoing war, this COVID, climate, could all this nonsense push to the side and the young people counted out this country, labeled as scammers and all this other baloney, rose up and built something that could not be stopped because they can cut the head off any one of us. But they cannot stop an army of mosquitoes, right? That's beautiful. That's the power that we have. Unstoppable wealth creation. And the secret is all the people in this room, ready, willing, and able to work. It's our birthright. Let's take it. Thank you.